Okay, so someone asked me to make a video kind of going over uh, power enrichment with the Hemis. So I'm going to cover two things in this video. One of them uh, is going to be the throttle and how to make it more sensitive. And the second thing is going to be power enrichment. So we're going to go to airflow. We're going to go to electronic throttle. Right here, this is your ramp rate. This is, as it says on the bottom, maximum rate of change for throttle. By increasing this number, it makes it so the rate of the throttle can speed up even faster. Uh, it would be the equivalent of adding more horsepower to an engine. It would basically physically move the blade faster. Okay, your maximum demanded throttle voltage, okay? 3.79, 3.8 is the voltage that your throttle bodies open all the way. You can take this entire thing and you can take it and make it 3.8, hit enter, okay? Now your throttle body can be opened maximum at even as low as 700 RPMs. Now, if you want it to speed up faster, which is what like a pedal commander does, you change this number. Only make small changes, like I would go from 0.02 and go to 0.07. Okay, you're like, oh, I want it faster. Increase it again and keep doing it till it's where you like it. Keep in mind that the more touchy it makes, the harder the vehicle may be to control. So don't go overboard with it. Okay, the next is your fuel and your power enrichment, okay? So this is the factory numbers. Okay, first of all, wide open throttle pedal threshold. For me, I set my wide open throttle to roughly 2.5, say 2.7, okay? Now, next, and basically, so you you cross that threshold of 2.7 volts on your throttle body, and you're in wide open throttle mode, uh, which, so in theory, it's saying that if your throttle goes over 50%, it's wide open throttle and it changes all the feeling for it. Next, delay. This is the power enrichment delay. Right now, anything over 10 miles an hour automatically sets a delay timer. Now, there's no seconds here, so there's no timer on it, okay? Above this RPM max, the delay is disabled. Well, you're never going to cross 8,100 RPMs in a Hemi. Move over here. I set this to 127. I set the RPM to zero. Next, we set the, inc the increase rate and decrease rate as high as they will go, which is 0.5, which kind of sucks because in GMs you can set that number to almost anything you want. Next, we have air charge and P ratio. Okay, most vehicles use one or the other. Okay, so basically, if you look, these tables are very similar to each other. But this power enrichment air charge based table is typically the table that most vehicles use. This right here is what I do for a base car, 0 0.0135. I'm trying to, you're going to have to bear with me here because I'm going to, I might have to pause it here so I can remember the formula. But for, let's see, 4.17. Honestly. Okay, so this is what it is. This is a Lamba number. Hold on, I'm, I'm just going to pause this so I can remember it. It's, it's kind of a pain to remember off the top. Okay, back. So, FA Stoic. 0 0.0688 is your Stoic number, okay? Now, when you add this number, you take the number that we just saw, Okay, point oh whatever on your stoic there on that last screen. You add this number to it and you can go to a lambda conversion chart and you can convert it over and get the actual air fuel ratio for it. But point oh one three five, what has from what I've found on the dyno for most five seven hemis, has been the perfect uh, power enrichment ratio to start off with as a base. So I highly recommend just setting the entire table to that number until you can get on a dyno and um, check it out.
Uh, normally, like I said, normally I set P ratio the same as air charge as a as a base, so that I know it's always using the same exact numbers. Uh, by doing these changes that I've just showed you, uh, it'll allow the vehicle to go into power enrichment mode uh, as soon as you pass the RPM delay, which on this one I have set to zero. You can set this to 1200 RPMs, which is what I use on GM. But as soon as it reaches um, a specific pedal, wide on throttle pedal, anything like that, breaks the delay, the timer, whatever, it'll automatically start adding fuel based on this. Now, you can set the numbers lower at the lower RPMs and lower air charges. Um, you can set them down to basically be zero here um, and slowly ramp up. That way, if you end up going into power enrichment mode by accident um, at a lower RPM, you can still have it close to lambda if you want. You don't have to max out this whole table. You could take this whole table and you could set, let's just say, you know, 0.0135 here in the corner, okay, and you can select this whole row, you can hit this button here, and now it'll work all the way up to it. You can do the same thing here, and these are the numbers working up to it, you know, and you can do that here, you can select here, well, let's do this, select here, let's do this, select here, let's do this. You know, and you can go all the way down and basically create a pattern at which it increases. Okay, so now that we have all that selected. You can just select the corner here and go bam. Now it'll slowly increase in every direction until it gets to the top number. See? You can do that. You can do whatever you want as a base. Uh, technically, when you do wide open throttle, you should still be using a wind band in order to determine if the vehicle is getting enough fuel. Like I said, this is just a base explanation of how power enrichment works um, so that way when you start getting into it you can kind of understand what you're doing a little bit more.